What's happening everyone? Cody Lefevre here. Gonna talk a little bit about powerlifting and three things about powerlifting. We're gonna talk about compensatory acceleration training. We're going to talk about technical failure. And we're gonna talk about technique at intensity. And this knowledge is all coming out of my brain housing group up here and it's derived from my own personal training and experiences as well as the things that I have read and things that I've learned and discussed with other lifters. That being said, don't take anything that I say as gospel. Question everything. And if you've got questions, if you've got concerns or complaints or comments or bitches, moans, groans, or gripes, you can put them down in the description box or rather comments box. I do the description box. You guys do the comments. Yeah. So you put it down in the comments box. I'm going to ignore them and act like they're not there. Psych. I'll, I'll read them and if it's something that I should probably learn and spin myself up on them, then I'll learn that stuff. And if you guys have some things that you would like me to talk about, you could put them down there too. Um, and if you guys don't want to talk about stuff, then you don't have to do anything, I guess. So, we're going to talk about this right here. Power, a scientific approach by Dr. Frederick C. Hatfield. You guys might know this guy as Dr. Squat. That's not him, that's Tom Platts. And that's Greg Knuckles. Hi, Greg. Let me move that mouse off your face. That's not very nice. So this book, you guys, it's an amazing book. It's very well written by a very smart guy. It's easy to read and it's easy to apply to your training. So it's one of the few training books that I feel everyone who's taking their training a little bit more seriously should pick up and read it and learn how to apply it to your training. It certainly changed my training for the better and it had a big impact on the way that I believe people should be trained, especially in the sport of powerlifting. So let's just get into the weeds here a little bit and I'm gonna try to make this as easy to understand as Dr. Frederick Hatfield made this Easy enough to understand for me. Yes. I think it's time for a beer intermission. Mmm. Oh, I love you, Schwarz beer. Kosten Reisger. That's German for beer. So, here you guys got a fancy graph. We're going to turn that off because it's making noises. Got a fancy graph here. It's right there. Take a look. Quick. Take, take a gander. It's compensatory acceleration training and plyometrics. It's what what's going to do for you. He's trying to sell you on this stuff, you guys. And it's, it does a pretty good job selling it on you. We've got a force line, absolute strength, all kinds of stuff. So we just only want to pay attention to so many papers over here. So many papers of the drafting table. It's not the NFL drafting table, though. That'd be cool. Here we've got a, a force max line. We've got a technical max. You have absolute strength. So take a quick look at that little guy. Don't admire the artwork too much. It's pretty good. Now, I want to talk about something that Dr. Swat talks about here. He says, notice that in no sport movement ever reaches absolute strength output with the possible exception of powerlifting. What? There simply isn't enough time to affect maximum muscle fiber recruitment. So what he's saying there is that in powerlifting, the only reason why we can reach absolute strength is because we start grinding more or less. Now, what happens if we are approaching absolute strength and our technical max this dotted line our technical max uh, is below our force max we can produce more force than we can maintain technique what what happens if, if that is the scenario well an analogy I like to use is if you have a very nice car let's say that you've got a Ferrari or a Porsche or a Lamborghini a Corvette Aston Martin any sort of nice car will do Nissan GTR I can keep going on for days, I love cars. So let's say you got a really nice car, goes very, very fast, uh, but you don't have the skills to drive the car to its maximum speed. What happens? You're probably gonna crash your car and it's probably going to explode and you're gonna catch on fire and die. And if you do that in the squat rack, the very exact same thing is gonna happen. So you don't wanna do that. 
So that's why you got to improve your technical max. Now, technical failure is a funny thing. It's just when we see guys like Andre Milanichev, he squats a world record squat, and it looks perfect. Well, how does this happen? Some people are going to say it happens in different ways. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's because he's training his technique at intensity. And what that means is that if you're always moving sub-max weights, you're refining your technique at those sub-max weights. Sometimes you just got to lift the heavy-ass weight. If you want to get good at lifting heavy weights, you might want to do that sometimes. Very small, manageable pieces. And that way it's a little bit more sustainable. And that's kind of where my GCCL method derived this idea from is that it's both psychologically and for the sake of refining my technique at intensity, you know, I've, I, I've got to work around these intensities. And the closer I get to competition, I want to do more repetitions at near competition intensities. So in competition, many times people will say, you want to open with something that's like a two or a three rep max. So that's why in the GZCL method, I talk about using a goal weight as your two rep max with the goal being to make that your three, four, five rep max. Because if you could turn that two rep max into a three rep max, you're one rep stronger. It's crazy how that works. Now, what happens when you train that way? You're improving your technical capacity. Rather than trying to reach ever further for a new one rep max, you're just simply working with weights that you can handle with a decent amount of technique and accumulating more reps, which means practice with good technique. And that's kind of what it looked like when I stepped on the platform at the American Cup. I set a PR total for myself, even though I didn't make weight. Ugh. This damn beer is making me fat. I'm an adult. I can do what I want. But, back on track, my technique actually looked pretty good. And all of those lifts were PR lifts. None of them were weights that I knew I could hit. I mean, I knew I could hit, but I hadn't hit them before. I have never deadlifted anything above 605. I had never squatted anything above 501. And I had benched more than 347, but never in a competition setting. Um, I got red light in my last competition with that weight. So, training with near max weights, the closer I got to competition, working on technique in that little bubble, a uh, technique range at intensity. And if you're not ever touching heavy weights, you're not going to get good at touching heavy weights, if that makes sense. So that's a little bit on technique at intensity and technical failure. So one more time, going back to the graph, ignore Gregory back here, he's just here for the show. We have absolute strength, technical max, force max, and only in powerlifting will you ever reach your absolute strength because we can grind through a lift. Now, let's talk specifically about compensatory acceleration training. This was popularized, I think, a few years ago. It kind of made a comeback by a guy named Jay Nira, another really awesome lifter. Uh, his technique is excellent, and he's very, very strong. I think he's a 220 or maybe a 198. Um, but anyways, Jay Nira started bringing it back. And a few other people started talking about it more and more and more because this book was published a hell of a long time ago. I think you could probably only find it on Amazon now. Um, but you could really find anything on Amazon, I guess, probably, except for puppies. You can't, maybe you can get puppies on Amazon. Weird. So, anyways, compensatory acceleration training, you guys. What Dr. Squat here says, simply stated, as you progress through a movement, you must attempt to accelerate the weight so that maximum force is being delivered throughout the movement. So what he means by that is saying when the movement gets easy, you know you have the lift, you continue to accelerate. Because guess what? When the weights get heavy, it's going to be your natural tendency to continue to accelerate through the movement. And that ties into using things like accommodating resistance, bands, chains, that sort of stuff. You don't really need that stuff if you have a good understanding of how to accelerate through a movement. We're going to take a beer intermission here. I'll be right back. And we're back. That was a really good beer intermission. So 
Last few things about compensatory acceleration. The gist of it is that as you gain the mechanical advantage in a lift, you're going to continue to accelerate through that mechanical advantage just until you get to the point of locking out the lift. That's the gist of compensatory acceleration, is to train your body to move weights fast. So you can't move weights fast, you're not going to get strong. Speed is strength. So I tell to all of the lifters that I coach, if you want to be strong, you have to be fast. Bands and chains, a great tool for teaching someone how to move fast. They're accommodating resistance, fantastic tool for that. They're not needed for that, but however, they're also very good for other things like overloading a movement, and that's what I like to use them for, and we can talk about that in a later video. Now let's go back and, and recap on some of the other things we talked about. We talked about technical failure. And on this little graph right here, that dotted line, sweet sound effects, that's your technical max. Now we want to have your technical max be greater than your force production max. Well, if, if that sort of makes sense, you, you want to be able to move weight well as close to your maximum strength as you possibly can. That way you're looking a whole, light, whole lot like Andre Milanichev. That dude is awesome. He's like my hero. He's my spirit animal. Well, him and Bill Kazmaier. So if your technical max is close to your limit strength, then you're going to have a, a lower risk of injury when lifting maximum weights, and you're going to be able to produce a greater amount of force into that movement in a safer, more sustainable way. Because if your technical max is too low, you try to produce a whole shitload of force, you start moving with a lot of force under a heavy load with shitty technique, that's how you're going to sustain an injury. And if it's not a catastrophic or an immediate injury, it will surely be a repetitive stress injury, something that happens over a long period of time. Now, with technical max and force production, just understand that force moves a whole lot like water, so it's going to go in the path of least resistance. So if you're trying to produce a whole lot of force and you have a weakness in your chain, a weakness in your body, a weakness or a fault in your technique, that force you're trying to produce and put into the bar to create vertical travel, it's going to rather go in the place where it's easiest applied. So let's say in the bench press, you're trying to recruit leg drive and push the bar off your chest, but you are poorly set up your butt raises off the bench, the force that's coming from your legs is working into vertical travel of your hips off the bench versus vertical travel of the bar. Not saying that my legs are making the bar move upwards, but my legs are applying leg drive and creating more tension in my body so that the force I'm producing with my arms is more directly applied to the bar versus down into my body. That's a brief example of what I'm talking about here with technical limits, force production. Remember, force moves like water. Be tight in your setup, be tight in your form, so that your force produced goes into moving the bar well. Now, the last little bit about technique at intensity. You have to work in these intensity blocks to refine your technique in those blocks so that as you get more repetitions in those ever-increasing intensities, your technique is perfect at those intensities. Because if you just try to max out and you haven't done any repetitions in this range, your, your technical limit is going to taper off right here before you get up here. And that's more or less the gist of the GZCL method, is that you want to practice your movements in these ranges so that you can get better in those ranges so that way when you get to competition and you're right here you're at the top of that pyramid no affiliation to the illuminati you're at the top of the pyramid when you should be competing and your technique is right there as well and that's how at the american cup i set a pr total and all my lifts were very clean and i got all white lights well that's the recap i hope you guys learned something from the video if you didn't learn anything, the only thing you maybe could have learned is that Kaltschranga is German for beer. Yep. Bye, Greg.